What's up guys, welcome back to Classic Octane. I am Taylor. Our KZ750 lithium ion battery came in. Uh, so this is just a model. I'll throw a link to this in the description below. Um, it's the same little battery I use in my CB550 projects and I've had really good success with it. Um, so I'm sure I, again, I'll throw a link to it so I don't have to try and read off this like 14 digit part number for you. Um, but hopefully this is gonna work well for us. So I did reach out to the manufacturer of our voltage regulator rectifier. It is a modern unit. And they said that it should work fine with uh, lithium ion batteries. Um, I looked at the um, kind of spec sheet of this battery and it can handle up to 14.7 volts of charging, if I remember correctly. Um, and our regulator is designed to put out less than that. So fingers crossed it's gonna work. It seems like it will. Um, I'll, once I get the bike back up and running, I'll kind of throw a voltmeter on here, rev it up and just make sure we're not ever kind of peaking above that voltage uh, and we should be just fine. So today we are going to kind of reconfigure the bracket under the seat here um, because I want to kind of mount this battery in a way that you can't really see it uh, from the side of the bike. I want to keep this under seat area nice and clean. Um, so we may have to either scrap this kind of stock bracket completely or kind of continue to modify it, but let's figure that out. So if you guys remember from the last video, we um, basically modified this stock electronics bracket uh, to kind of put the electronics uh, horizontal underneath the seat. Um, worked out well, nice and clean, but now that we are going to try and kind of hide a battery, uh, I honestly think this big space kind of under the tank right in front of the seat is gonna be a perfect place. Um, this little battery kind of fits right in there. Only issue is that our starter solenoid is kind of currently taking up that real estate. So I'm gonna kind of uh, drill this out and see if I can remove it and maybe just relocate the starter solenoid over here. If that doesn't work, we may very well just kind of remake this whole piece. Maybe I'll get like just a, a flat piece of um, steel. We'll kind of put it up here, start to mount things underneath. I don't know, we'll kind of, you'll be figuring it out along with me. Um, but the first thing we're gonna do is kind of drill out the little uh, rivets or spot welds that are holding on this uh, starter solenoid here so that we can remove that kind of get our battery in the general position and then we can kind of figure out where we need to go from there. So in order to do this I'm going to need to kind of pull off all of these electronics. This uh, starter solenoid is on this little rubber mount. I want to try and uh, keep that because it keeps the solenoid nice and isolated from any kind of potential grounding points. So we're going to want to keep that mount which is right on here. So I, you probably won't be able to see this because it's kind of black on black, but there's like these two little, um, I'm gonna call them spot welds that I think we can just drill out and then this whole bracket will come off. Then we can figure out if we wanna relocate that. What I most likely am going to do, at least if you ask me this very moment, is probably gonna be to cut off most of this bracket and then kind of build it out as a little bit thicker, stronger material that will kind of hold our battery, you know, something like that, as low as the bottom of this bracket, kind of right about there. That's kind of what I'm thinking right now, but to start, we're gonna pull off these other electronics. The fuse box is also just held on um, by some little rubber mounts, and then the voltage regulator is uh, just 210 mils. Bracket back in place and there just isn't quite enough room to uh, stick the battery in there. Um, I also really want to keep the uh, kind of rubber uh, mounting strap under here, this little like bungee cord kind of thing that um, holds the tank down because obviously if we're going off-roading I want to make sure the tank is nice and secure. So I think I just came to the conclusion that this bracket is just basically going to be um, scrapped and I'm just gonna make a whole piece uh, from scratch now. So I have a couple of components to kind of think about here. So I have a battery, like I said, we're gonna continue to kind of go down the path of mounting it uh, nice and low, um, kind of right here in the center. It'll probably go about right there. Um, and then I have the fuse box, the voltage regulator, and the starter solenoid that all kind of have to fit up here. 
So I'm going to, I guess, bust out the cardboard and we will start to kind of make a template of um, how our little electronics tray, we'll call it, uh, is gonna uh, turn out. So bear with my drawings here because I'm not a, uh, an artist, but here's kind of the general layout of the box is what I'm thinking. It's about uh, seven inches wide at the back, five at the front, total length of about 11 inches. Uh, the front four inches will be uh, one inch deeper. Total depth here will be two and a half inches. Total depth on the uh, bigger section will be one and a half inches. Here's kind of a, a side view of what it'll look like and here's my super rough uh, 3D view. So kind of what I'm thinking here, like I said, it'll be a box an inch and a half deep right here up to about this point. It'll drop to two and a half inches and then go all the way to the front. That'll give us a nice little recessed area for our battery to sit in and then enough room um, to mount everything else. So the material I have to use is just this uh, 16 gauge um, piece of sheet metal right here. A sheet metal break would be pretty cool for this. What do you say we go buy one? Welcome back to Watch Taylor Struggle to Get Heavy Things Out of His Truck. Uh, this is episode two. If you missed episode one, here's a clip. So the name of the game is going to be to try and get this thing out of the crate uh, while it's still in the bed of the truck. Uh, I think that'll obviously help shed probably 50 pounds of weight. Then I'm going to use my engine hoist uh, over it, pick it up, and then slide it over to where I think its home is going to be on the new workbench. So. new brake is in. So if you're not familiar, uh, this is called a finger brake. Each one of these little pieces uh, is removable. That way if you're bending like a box uh, and you need to have like a, you know, like a corner like this basically, you could like put fingers inside of here and bend it and still have like clearance for the sides. It'll make more sense when we get to that point. Um, I have never owned and or used uh, one of these before. Um, so it's definitely going to be a learning curve and there's a chance we might kind of mess it up, but this is a 48 inch brake um, So it can do like 20 gauge Up to the full length What we'll be bending is 16 gauge. So I'm hoping in the you know 10 12 inch range um, It can handle 16 gauge uh, without a problem, but uh, only time will tell So since I've actually never used a metal brake before I'm thinking I'm probably going to need to do this in probably three sections. So I'm thinking I can probably bend the entire bottom, which is like one, two, three, four breaks total, and then just cut the sides and weld the sides on. Um, that may prove to be more difficult since it's not a, if it was a straight piece, it'd be pretty you know self-explanatory, but because we're tapering in, you know, the, the small kind of, one inch piece right there isn't going to be a perfectly rectangular, you know, piece. So I'm probably going to cut a piece of cardboard of what I think is the correct shape and length. And we will like literally put the cardboard in the brake and break it and just kind of see how it looks, I guess. 
So I have my piece of cardboard here. Basically, I just cut it the total length, including the like vertical sections. And then the top is seven inches, the bottom is five inches, and it just kind of tapers down. And I was able to kind of mess with the brake a little bit and get what I think is gonna be kind of the proper, proper layout here. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and try and transfer this to some sheet metal. I think I have enough that if I really mess up the first one, I can probably make a second one. If not, we'll have to go buy some more metal, but um, I don't know. I guess we're gonna see how well it works out. I also have to think through the order of operations of which bends we do first. That way you can still get the piece where you need to get it. So I think we, the idea is you kind of start in the center and kind of work your way out. That way you don't have, uh, you know, potentially all that much that has to go into the brake before it's bent up. ready to attempt our bend. I think I did a somewhat decent job. I don't, uh, I don't know. I feel like this would be much easier to cut if I had a like metal cutting band saw I could have put it through. Um, I need to get some more kind of metal working tools. Um, I also picked up this a while back. So this is an angle gauge. So basically what I'm going to be able to do is like stick it to here, zero it, and then as I bend, I can see to what degree I'm bending. So obviously I'm looking for 90 degree bends here, but I think this can do up to 135 degrees total. Um, and of course any uh, degree variation in between that. Clear it, and I wanna do the bend that goes the opposite direction as everything else first, I believe. I'm going to put this thing in the center here. Clamp these down. So there's going to be some spring back. So I'm going to go to like 92. Looks pretty good. Hmm, may have gone a little past, but not bad. Pretty happy with that. So now what? <laughs> Now I think I'm going to go to this one. It's going to go... Well, crap. So I screwed myself up because my instruction piece said that this bend should be the first bend. And when I line those up, it's actually this one. This one should have been the first one. Because now that is bent the wrong direction. So you can tell I'm learning here and I hope you guys are uh, patient to learn with me. So it's actually my design. This brake is not capable of bending it uh, because there's only a one inch kind of vertical piece here that has kind of opposing bends. Uh, there's just no way to do it with uh, with this wide of a, of a piece here. So if you think about it, you know, if we came in here bent this piece up like that then we need to come over and we need to bend this piece like that so we'd have to come in here but we run out of space and we can't get all the way to our bend and remember this is already bent to get that kind of compound bend so i'm gonna have to probably i guess cut this into two sections and then just weld them together back with my two sections what do you say we try this again so we'll start with this little guy. So this needs to be bent this way. We have the little one inch piece needs to be bent 
that way. This one will not be bent this way. Went ahead and threw a couple tacks on here just so we can kind of put it in place, see what we're working with. Should fall just in front of this crossbar here, just like that. Oh yeah, she's looking pretty good. So the battery is just gonna, you know, kind of slide right in this front section. Sweet. So far, so good. So what we're gonna do now is pull this thing back out. I'm going to. Um, kind of lay this flat on some sheet metal and just mark out um, some sides. And then once we have those marked out, cut out, I'll bring you guys back and we will uh, TIG weld this whole thing up. We were able to fusion weld the whole thing. So it's super hot right now. As soon as it cools down, I am going to just kind of lightly dress them all with a grinder just to make it you know, nice and smooth. And then we still have to kind of figure out how we're actually gonna mount everything um, in the box itself. So it's all uh, ground down and um, turned out really nice. I'm really happy with it so far. Um, we still have a lot of kind of finishing work to do. Um, what I mean by that is we need to kind of figure out all of the components that are going to live in this box and exactly how to mount them. So this is where it's going to live. We'll throw on some clamps just to kind of temporarily get it where we want. Right about there is probably going to be good. Um, so obviously the battery is going to live up in this front compartment. Um, so Shurai, when they ship these batteries, the inside the box is this foam that actually has adhesive on the back. I don't know if they intentionally send this foam uh, for this purpose, but I always like to take this. You know, I can stick a piece to the bottom, maybe stick another piece to this front wall here. And then we put the battery in. And I am also going to utilize the stock little rubber kind of bungee cord mount, I'm going to call it. Um, to kind of go around and kind of fasten this battery down in the box itself. So when we're bouncing around off road and everything, uh, it'll stay nice and secure. It's got this little cutout in the middle, uh, which will be perfect uh, for the little bungee cord to go right into. The rest of the components, we have like our voltage regulator. I am going to run it inside the battery box, um, which is what I do on my 550s and I've never had a problem with them overheating. A worst case scenario, if we do have an issue with this overheating, we can uh, take it out and mount it on the bottom, kind of underneath where the battery is. It'll get decent airflow there, but right now there's a very clean, clear shot of air that's coming right over the carbs and will come right under here. There's gonna be like a, a half inch or so gap under here. Um, so air will still kind of be flowing through. Um, I trust that it won't be a problem, but uh, again, it's something we'll monitor. So that'll go somewhere around there. I got some grommets and stuff to drill holes through uh, so we can run our cables through, but we'll worry about that uh, a little bit later. Well, that's where I'm going to have to leave it off uh, today, but I'm just going to keep this as one long video. Um, so I'll see you guys in the morning. It's the next morning. I'm back out here on the battery box. So basically what I'm going to do now is just kind of put a lot of the components in their uh, respective places and start to use a Sharpie and kind of mark out where we want um, the different mounts to be. And then I need to figure out the overall mounting of the box itself. Um, so the little bracket that the starter solenoid goes on, I am go just going to kind of cut it in half, I think. I can weld on um, the piece like this for the starter solenoid, and then I can weld on the other piece 
um, for this little guy. I believe this is the diode. Um, so that'll go there. For the voltage regulator, I'm going to weld uh, two bolts kind of facing up vertically uh, to the box itself and they'll slide on and I can just put two um, kind of nuts to hold that down. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Um, very similar setup for the uh, fuse box. Basically there's just a little rubber um, kind of isolator mount here. We're just gonna have a little piece that's bent 90 degrees. We'll weld that on and that'll hold uh, this, so. All the little brackets are on. So I have my little hooks for my battery hold down. I have my two studs for my um, regulator rectifier, mount for the starter solenoid, mount for the fuse box, mount for the little diode. Um, I've got a hole punched through the side over here for our wires to come through and I do have a grommet for that. Um, and we should have enough room on this side of the battery for uh, you know, just enough room for these kind of connectors. So I know it's going to be a little bit hard to see, but uh, everything seems to fit in here pretty well. Um, no complaints. I kind of wish I would have put the starter solenoid like 90 degrees that way. Um, just because the connector is a little bit close to this, but I, you know, with the kind of protective rubber on it and everything, it's not going to be a problem. Um, so it's not worth kind of redoing it. Um, I certainly would if I thought it was going to be a problem, but just kind of hindsight, I kind of wish it just would have went in a little bit different angle, but um, fuse box is right here, which means it's going to be nice and accessible. Um, so the last kind of thing we need to do is figure out the actual mounting for the box itself. What I'm thinking is we have a nice kind of solid mount on the back here. So I'll probably do like a, you know, a little 90 degree you know, piece of angle iron either underneath this and weld it to the back of the box or on top. And then utilize these front two ears that are kind of hanging off here. So basically I'll get a piece of metal and kind of have it come out of the side of the box. And then we will drill, these are threaded right now. We'll drill those through and we'll either thread the piece underneath or weld a bolt or something on the, the underside so that we can kind of bolt directly through it and that'll give us our four mounting points and it should be uh, more than sturdy. All the uh, angle brackets are on there. I'm probably gonna grind these down just to kind of round out the edges even though it won't really matter. Um, so the two side angle brackets are gonna utilize these ears right here. We do need to drill these out because they're currently uh, tapped. And then we are gonna drill two holes back here. And then so the bracket will kind of slide up underneath all of these. So instead of welding a bolt to those, I'm actually going to tap them. Uh, so I bought a tap and die set, actually a few from kind of estate sales. And then I have another kind of just set of, uh, of taps in here. So I have a few uh, six millimeter by 1.0, uh, which is what all of the other kind of hardware and everything on this bike is. It's very common size on a lot of these Japanese bikes. Um, so we're gonna drill the proper, I gotta look up what the proper um, drill size is for these. We'll drill out the holes, tap them, and ideally we'll be able to just run, you know, four bolts straight down. Got all my holes drilled, and we should be ready to tap these two. So I don't really have any like tap oil, so I'm just gonna use WD-40. Hope that'll uh, get things moving here. Never tapped anything before. So it's a pretty nerve wracking process. It's really not too bad. You just wanna like stop every three quarters of a turn or so and just bring the tap back the opposite direction to kind of break your, your chip a little bit. And there we go. You're all the way through on that one. Now we'll get a six mil bolt. In theory, this should screw in. Just like that. 
another one. I think that's a success. All the fabrication on this thing is finally done. Uh, this was a lot of work, as I'm sure you guys know, because I'm sure this video ended up being uh, a little bit longer than my typical videos are. I didn't really want to break it up into two parts. I kind of wanted to just keep it rolling and, and have one long video and kind of show this whole creation uh, start to finish. Um, so now that the fabrication is done, I'm going to clean it up, hit it with a coat of VHT uh, chassis and roll bar paint. That is the paint I use for most of my frames. That's what I painted the whole entire Triumph frame with. Uh, and you know thousands of miles and over a year of riding later and the paint still looks perfect um, So I'm really really um, satisfied with that uh, Now that we know exactly which mounting tabs we're using I can go ahead and come in here and cut off some of these unused ones It's like the hinge for the original seat uh, Some of the side cover mounts that we're not going to use anymore um, I'm gonna wait to cut off some on this side just because I do still need to make a mount for the exhaust over here um, So maybe we'll jump on that um, in the next video and then we have a little bit of fabrication to do on a speedo mount and yeah then we can start to kind of move into finishing stages of you know polishing paint making sure everything is nice and clean i still got to figure out what i want to do with the wheels um, there are some rust spots on them so i don't think we're going to leave them chrome uh, most likely i'm just going to paint them black but throw a comment uh, down below of what you think i should do with the wheels if i should get them powder coated if i should paint them if i should brush them keep them the way they are uh, you name it, just let me know what you think. And uh, I'm going to go edit this video up and then immediately jump out of the next one for you guys. So I'll see you guys soon.